Just a perfect place to ride. We're looking at the Surface 604 Big Sky, and it is the larger of the Big Sky and Sunny Day. They're both cruiser models. Fairly affordable, $21.99. They're stripped down a little bit, but Surface 604 is known for using higher quality parts and sort of that, you know, semi-affordable. This one, it's class two by default, but it can actually be unlocked for class three if you want to go a little bit faster. It's got a trigger throttle. It's got torque sensing pedal assist. It's got a little torque sensor back here. And I'm just going to jump into this. So it only comes in one frame size slash style. It's this high step with kind of the classy looking uh, tubing there sort of in the middle, the swept back handlebar. It's got this matte gray finish with some bright orange and blue accents. The sunny day, it's sort of a mid step. So lower standover height and smaller frame. This one is 19 inches. That's the seat tube length. Whereas the sunny day, it's about 17 and a half. That's the big differences between the two. Otherwise, the hardware, the components, they're gonna be fairly similar. I weighed this just a minute ago. It was like 55 and a half pounds. And that weight is situated fairly centrally and low on the frame, right where you want it. Improves handling and stability. You'll notice that there's no suspension fork here. This is a rigid aluminum alloy fork, but we do have these higher volume tires. So 27.5 by 2.4 and in person, I mean, you can really tell they're, they're quite wide. So that's gonna give you some stability, a little bit of comfort, and it's going to make the wheel taller. So a little bit uh, larger diameter on the tire. And, th and that's going to smooth over the cracks and bumps a little bit more efficiently with a lower attack angle. So again, the frame, aluminum alloy, except we do have a steel chain cover. So I used my magnet on that. And the reason I, I mentioned that is steel is fairly sturdy. It adds a little bit of weight compared to plastic, but it might not rattle around quite as much. However, if you scratch this, it could end up with a little bit of rust. Just use some touch-up paint on there and, and that'll, that'll help fix it. 42 tooth steel chain ring up here. And we do have a square tapered spindle. So a lot of the other Surface 604 bikes, they'll have like a hollow spindle from Samux that's a little bit stiffer and fancier. This gets the job done, but that's one of the trade-offs to keep the price point a little lower. 170 millimeter branded crank arms here. Nice big aluminum alloy Welgo BMX pedals. I love these. Gives you plenty of surface area and traction, and they just look nice. They match the frame pretty well. Coming back to the cassette, this is a nine speed, 11 to 36. So it's a fairly wide spread. And that's important because again, this starts as a 20 mile per hour bike, but you could unlock it and go a little bit faster up to 26, 28 miles per hour. And having those extra gears and that smaller sprocket is going to make it more comfortable at the higher speed. Shimano Alivio derailleur, decent. And then right up here, we've got the nine speed trigger shifters with the optical display window. You can use your thumb for the low gears, but you have to use your pointer finger for the high gear, which to me, it's too bad. They're, they do have Shimano Dior and it would let you to use your pointer finger or your thumb. And the reason I'm pointing that out is I, I like to use my, my pointer finger, my, my middle finger for braking. Brakes on this bike are really excellent. They are Tektro hydraulic disc with large 180 millimeter rotors, dual piston calipers, and the brakes have motor inhibitors as well. So anytime you pull the brake, it's going to cut power to the motor instantly for safety. And it would also activate the optional rear light, which would kind of blink. So this bike is wired, pre-wired to add lights. A lot of the other Surface 604 models come with lights, but again, this one's stripped down. You could also add some fenders. We've got some mounting points for that on the front and the rear. And then you could also add a rear rack right here. So we do have some additional, even hardware that's just already set up if you wanted to buy that that rack and use this maybe for commuting or just hauling a trunk bag. Maybe you've got a picnic in tow or maybe a child seat or something like that. It comes with a larger, more plush saddle than a lot of their other bikes. So coming back to the Cruiser, we got the big swept back handlebars, a little bit more upright, taller stem, and then this big comfortable saddle. This is the Selly Royale Gypsy with these elastomer bumpers, 30.4 millimeter seat post diameter. And you could swap that out for a suspension seat post. So you'd get that little bit more comfort. Skipping the suspension fork saves some weight. It would add some kind of flex and play in the frame. 
of course it adds some cost as well so with that more upright body position a little bit more weight back here suspension seat post for 100 200 bucks you know smooth things out but coming back to these tires i love that they have reflective sidewall stripes these are anova i mentioned the you know 650b standard and they have a decent tire pressure spread so 30 to 65 psi and if you lower the spread you take it down closer to that you know 30 40 you're going to get a little bit more comfort it's not going to be quite as efficient and you might not get the same range uh, but again you know just dampen the vibration and and make the bike more comfortable for you this is a purpose-built frame internally routed cables you can see they just go right through here they're a little bit exposed at the bottom bracket here kind of come out the main tube down there and then they're routed along the right a little bit crowded on the right here you can see the power cable going to the motor it's fairly tucked in and then we have the shifter cable right here all of this is modular quick disconnects and stuff so if you need to do a repair maybe the display brakes or the trigger throttle or the button pad it's all fairly easy to to update and here's that that open port for the optional headlight they have a shiny 120 it could be mounted right here you know there's a lot of possibilities for this bike by the way quick release up front 100 millimeter hub spacing nine millimeter quick release gear pretty 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 standard stuff and then back here i think it's like 138 millimeters and then a 12 millimeter slotted threaded axle and they don't have a torque arm on this but they do have a torque washer and on the other side there's the torque sensing plate so it's thicker than most rear dropouts some, some brands actually have like a big metal piece that just adds additional strength over on the other side you can see the torque sensor it's that plate when you're starting the bike, if you're pedaling and you power it on, it could mess up the calibration. So that's one of the things to be uh, conscious of. Great kickstand position back here. I love the matching, like paint matched rims. It kind of tie into the frame, gives this bike a sort of a beautiful look. And then the hub motor, they have their name printed on it, but unlike some of their other bikes, it's not like a Buffang motor. I think it's just some other off-brand. 500 watt nominal, 750 watt peak. They say maybe 45 to 60 newton meters of torque. I don't have a real easy way to measure that, but as I've been riding, the motor noise is a little bit more pronounced and it's fairly zippy. Like I definitely hear it and it's doing pretty well. So one of the things that you have to choose with this bike is the battery capacity. So for $21.99, you get the base level battery. It's a 48 volt pack, 48 volts, a little bit more efficient, more powerful. And this is a 12 amp hour, but they also have a 14 amp hour and a 20 amp hour. And that 20 amp hour battery pack kind of spills out to the side a little bit. So it's not quite as perfectly symmetrical. Of course, it's gonna add some weight as well. Again, 55 and a half pounds is what we see here. And then the charge port, it's fairly low right there by the crank arms. So if you're plugged in and these pedals get cycled backwards, they could kind of bump that and that's a little bit vulnerable. Again, there's no fender, so it could get wet, it could get dusty. It's designed to be water resistant, but I just wanna point that out to be fair, a little bit of a trade-off. And of course, the black battery stands out on the frame. It's not color matched. Go ahead and insert the keys. This is a wrench, re engine Dorado battery pack. Tips out like that. It's like six and a half, seven pounds, 48 volt, 12 amp hours. It's got a little USB charging port at the top, which is kind of cool. And that's actually a second USB charging port right up here at the base of the display, which is wonderful if you have maybe your own aftermarket light. Put it right up here. It's going to keep you more visible, shine down. It won't get blocked by the tire or anything. That's really nice. Or maybe you mount your mobile phone, smartphone, and you're using it for GPS. The display is color. It's really nice. We're going to get into that in just a minute. But I want to show you the charger they ship with the bike. It's a two amp charger. So there are four amp chargers these days that go faster, but for the base level pack, you know, 500 watt hour, it, this is fine. It kind of makes sense, fairly lightweight, saves some cost. When you get up to the higher capacity optional batteries, you can get a faster charger from Surface 604 too to get you back on the road quickly if you're doing multiple rides in a day. It's nice to be able to remove the battery pack too, because if you're in a hot location, you're leaving the bike in the garage, the extreme heat can degrade the cells a little bit. The extreme cold can kind of stunt your range temporarily. So a lot of times, whether you're commuting or you just live in a place with extreme temperatures, just kind of take that battery pack off. Same thing for if you're loading this on a car rack, you're just gonna reduce the weight a little bit, make it easier to lift up. Brought us over into the shade to make it easier to see the display. Just gonna press the power button here for a couple seconds. Comes to life, it's color. Got the branding going on, kind of nice. 
And then we've got our readouts. So first of all, we have a percentage battery indicator. That's awesome. It's 1% increments. It's just way more precise than like four or five bars that disappear one at a time. This is, this is really nice so you don't get stranded. There are five levels of assist. So if you start to get low on the battery, you just you know, use a little bit less power and kind of limp home without running completely out. Um, plus and minus is how you do that. So we'll take it down to zero and the throttle doesn't work, pedal assist is turned off, it's just a bike with a nice display to give you some feedback. Walk mode does work though, so if I hold the minus key for just a second here, it activates that rear motor just real slowly. That's very nice if you get a flat tire or maybe you're in a crowded park or a steep terrain. These tires, even though they have some traction, if they were like losing traction, walk mode would be a, a great way to get the bike uh, going again. And then down here, we've got trip distance, odometer. If we press the I button, we're gonna cycle through some of the other readouts. So max speed, average speed, time, back to odometer. And then over here, we have a dedicated light button. You can see that it, it shows up here, but there are no lights connected. So it's just sort of useless for now. But again, I love that they sell the exact right light. We just plug right in if we wanted to. Oh, while we're on the topic of accessories and stuff, no bottle cage bosses. That's one of the big trade-offs. And they might've had room right here. Um, maybe they just didn't want to compromise the frame. If, if you are bringing a drink, there are these cup holders that could go up here, or you could get a, a rear rack or maybe a backpack with like a hydro straw or something like that. But on a hot day, you know, it's noticeable. You're like, where's my drink? Okay, back to the display. I mentioned before that there's some settings and you could adjust the top speed. So if we hold plus and minus, we'll get into that. We've got display settings and advanced settings. I'm not gonna go all the way into those menus, but just know that you could go in there, you can make the display brighter or darker, change from kilometers to miles, adjust the speed, that kind of thing. So let's just exit. And then we're back to the main readout. Right in the center, that's the current speed. So as we go along, it's going to surge and we'll, we'll get an idea of how fast the bike is going. I really love that that trigger throttle overrides each of the five levels of assist. It means that I can be kind of cycling efficiently with one or two, just getting a little bit of support from the motor. But if I need to pass someone or climb a hill or something, I can just boost that throttle and it'll help me get going. It's the same thing for if you've got a, a heavy rack loaded or a child trailer or something like that. Getting started with the throttle is much easier than trying to stand up and push. But with a torque sensor, it's actually fairly responsive. So I'm gonna try to demonstrate that here. Just step over the big frame. And then I'm in, I'm in level two right now. Yeah, it's quick. It feels natural and smooth. The harder I push, the more power I get. We'll go up to level five here. So I'm gonna push very gently. And it's not giving me a lot of power, but as soon as I push hard, it kicks right in. So that's awesome. It makes this bike feel more natural and it gives you an incentive to work hard if you wanna go fast. Probably extend your range as well, which for the more efficient battery is a good thing. You still get pretty good range. And uh, yeah, it just feels more like riding a bike. Woo, echo. <laughs> gonna change some gears here right into this hill so this is one of those examples if I was struggling if my knees were hurting I can just tap that throttle and coast the rest of the way up more than coast like actually get some good speed going it's like we're up to like 26 kilometers per hour right there it's very stable with those high volume tires comfortable very nice. And there's that upright body position. So this is the first time I've seen like a cruiser bike from Surface 604. They are a Canadian company and 604 denotes the 604 area code on the phone numbers there. And they have beaches and mountains and cities. And so it's like they, they try to make bikes that could handle all these different environments. And uh, I'm a fan. They give you a year long comprehensive warranty as well as like three years on the frame. And they sell through different shops as well as direct to consumer. So Rides in Motion here in Scottsdale, Arizona actually set this one up for me. Great shop, really nice. Uh, 
service, friendly people at the front, good location. This trail is just right out the front door. So you could go in and test ride a bike like this and go on this exact trail if you wanted to. That's one of the big benefits and possibly one of the reasons that this bike costs a little bit more than like the super cheap direct to consumer bikes online. I still think this is pretty affordable and it checks so many boxes with the higher speed and some of the nicer components that, you know, kind of makes me a fan. Back at electricbikereview.com, I've got all the specs and everything measured by hand. I try to answer questions there, comments that come up, but I also have a compare tool. So you could look at some of the other cruiser bikes out there back to back and see what you like. This review is being done for free. My goal is just to help you guys. I love you, ride safe, and we'll see you next time.